Now that you have done a little bit of the dimensionality reduction and visualization of your data, uh, we'll go a little bit through the data integration and batch correction. You've seen a little bit of those uh, topics already in the normalization uh, lecture with OSA. And now we go into more details how they, they work and the pros and cons of, of some of the methods that we will mention now. And I'll also explain a couple of the methods that you use in the, uh, in the lectures, uh, in the exercises. So this presentation is, uh, was done by uh, Ahmed, and then I uh, updated it to, to the latest versions. And Ahmed, you will also hear a talk uh, from him, I think on Thursday, if I'm not wrong, uh, for cell type prediction. Um, so why do we have to integrate our data? So as we have been discussing a lot right now, uh, there are many sources of variance in the single cell data. So many of the, that variance that you see in the data set is also biological, meaningful. So for example, you have the different cell type and this causes variance. You have the genetic background of different mice, for example, or humans as well, different cell states. I can also put the laser pointer. Different cell states or microenvironment where the, those cells uh, are. Uh, gene expression and stochasticity as the expression burst that also mentioned, cell cycle dynamics, uh, transcription bursts, oscillations, and so on. But how, however, there are so many technical variants that can be uh, introduced to your data sets, uh, especially when you want to analyze big uh, or join different data sets all together to do a uh, joint analysis. Many differences will be based, for example, the capture efficiency that we have uh, discussed already, amplification biases, PCR artifacts, contamination, doublets, cell damage, and so on. So because of that, that huge amount of variation that we see in, in, in the technical uh, aspect of single cell, you see batch effects quite often. And this is a common uh, thing that you will see. And that in our data set, in the previous uh, examples, we saw that some samples are completely separated in the TSNE or in the UMA. So this is a very uh, common uh, to see. So for example, here you have uh, PBMCs from four different donors and they are completely different. And here is another way of seeing the batch. So maybe the cells are actually in the same cluster, but the cluster is divided by donor. And you can clearly see that uh, the, on the left, you have the healthy, and then on the right, you have the sick patients, for example. But that can also be uh, biologically meaningful because the, these, the healthy ones, maybe they have uh, expression of some genes, but uh, you would not expect, or at least don't want to have the cells divided by batch like this. Um, a very clear example that you see in the literature is, for example, also the integration of different methodologies. So here you have CellSeq, CellSeq2, Fluidime, SmartSeq2 in drop one, two, three, and four. So, and this is a pancreas data set. And here you can see, for example, how many cells you have. So you have, for example, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in general cell types. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, no, eight maybe. Uh, if you count those two separately, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So around seven clusters, for the, regardless of the methodology. But if you just analyze them all together, you see many clusters that are composed of only one data set. And this is because some cells uh, from one cluster, they will be just separated, especially for this cluster in, in brown here or uh, yellow. But after integration, the analysis that you want to do is the analysis of the consensus cell type that is present in all data sets. So in this case, you have still one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight or nine uh, clusters. And some of those are still present in one data set or another. But overall, you see that the cells are quite well mixed together, regardless of the data set. The same thing is valid for uh, so for example, here is an integration of uh, different technologies, the six technologies here. So here you have the different cell types that are annotated based on some gene markers and also do different species. So you, the integration can be uh, artificially anything. 
So integrate the species, integrate technology, integrate batches, integrate uh, cell conditions, and so on. Here is also two different modalities. So for example, integration of RNA sequencing and the methylation, uh, gene methylation data sets. And then you can see also that uh, an integration process is robust if the, the cells are kind of mixed together li like this. Here you have a, a RNA and a taxic. So I'm just giving examples how you would expect your data set to look like. Of course, in some in instances, you might see some clusters that are present in one data set, and that, that will be OK. And the cells that are present in both, you would expect to have a very homogeneous mix, not a separation. Um, there are many confounders and uh, source of variability, as I mentioned. So just to point out a couple of ones again, the processing and sample quality, the library prep and sequencing methodology, and the experimental reality. So sometimes the technical batches will also confound the downstream analysis, especially when you do differential gene expression. So when you have, for example, confounded um, batches, and I'll explain a little bit that later on how to counter batch effects. Uh, in many cases, some, sometimes you cannot uh, distinguish what is a batch effect and what is a biological significant uh, biological uh, uh, variance. Um, and some sources of biological variability and patient samples are highly variable, especially for a single cell. The genetic perturbations, then you do, for example, like perturbations in inflammation and so on. They, these are also very well seen in, in single cell. And of course, cross-species analysis are also very uh, easy to, to distinguish. So, and that's why sometimes we also need to perform those integrative steps before doing any further steps like clustering and differential gene expression. So this is what I meant with a confounded design, is that you have these biological groups, one, two, and three, and then you process them separately, batch one, batch two, batch three, or let's say that you do different single cell methodologies in each one, and then you want to compare all of them. And that is experiment design uh, that is, of course, will give you wrong results because the differences that you'll see here will be basically due to the uh, technological differences or to the batch differences. And what you want to do, as also Carolina mentioned before, is that if you have your different groups, you want to mix them into different batches or process one uh, sample from each group uh, together with the other groups as well. So all groups in one batch, so that the differences between the groups are not because of the batch, but because of the group differences themselves. So this is a not confounded experimental design. And this is the best way to combat, uh, avoid batch effects in your experiment. So if you plan your experiments beforehand, this is the best way to do it. So now I'll go on a very brief introduction to some of uh, methods, as well as for any other method in single cell. There are hundreds of methods for that data integration. Um, and I'll just go overview on the different types that you can see. And of course, I will recommend a couple of ones, which are, the, of course, the ones that you're using also in the, in the exercises. So there are a couple of, let's say, four different ways. One is the regression-based. Another one is joint dimensionality reduction. Like, let's say that you do a PCA together with all data sets together uh, in general, or graph-based joint clustering that you do clustering together, and I'll go uh, through one of them as well. And then, or you can do both, do a joint dimensionality reduction, let's say a, a PCA together with all your data sets, and then do uh, a graph-based clustering. And there are many other methods that you can do, but I'll go through so, so you have an idea what uh, each one of them do. <clears throat> 